where in the next half an hour you're going to hear a lot of stuff about documentation and uh, single sourcing, data, uh, conditional text, and more of that wild stuff. Um, I first introduce myself. I'm Christoph van Tomme. I'm the, um, the, the co-founder of Pronovix, which is a Hungarian Bel Belgian company. And we've been working with, we started to work on DITA, uh, which, which is an XML standard for um, single sourced documentation. And I'm going to explain you in a minute what that exactly means and what it has to do with Drupal. Um, I took this slide because, um, and, and I went back to the Linux world, because the, the icons are just sexier. <laughs> um, but this is where we are heading. Um, basically, a bunch of distributions that are like, reusing much of the same stuff, uh, and then like, a couple of um, contrib modules that are being used in a bunch of distributions, and all of them are making their own documentation. All of them, separately. None of them are really, well, there's going to be some collaboration, but in the end, if you want to document a distribution, you're starting from scratch every single time. And that's just insanity. Because there's this really cool technology called single sourcing. And uh, with single sourcing, what you basically do is that instead of trying to build one book, you're building uh, individual topics, like small pieces of content that you can reuse. And, and the core there is minimalism, so instead of, and, and structure. So instead of trying to like, make one fluid text that describes your whole project, you, you create small pieces that can be reused in different, in different outlines, in different maps. The cool thing is also that you can use it in different contexts. So you can use the same topic in help, in the online documentation, in a bunch of other stuff. And uh, you, you can publish it to different formats. So like EPUB, Kindle, and so on and so on. Now today, the, the kind of industry standard for, um, for single sourced publication for, of technical documentation is DITA. DITA is an open standard. It stands for Darwin Information Type Architecture. It has nothing to do with um, with ladies in champagne glasses. That's what you find when you look the first time for DITA. Um, it's a very serious standard that originated at IBM uh, and that they open sourced, uh, that they opened up uh, uh, through the OASIS committee, through an OASIS committee. And it, it has a couple of very interesting structures that I think we could use also in Drupal's documentation. One, it's topic oriented. So instead of having one outline one like, you know, this is the way it should all be organized. You're, you've got individual topics. They've got maps. They're separate from the topics. They allow you to uh, take it one. Um, yeah, the it's the outline. <laughs> so like instead of like in a book module where you have only one outline, you can have as many as you want. You want your own outline? Go ahead, make it. Um, they got CONREF, which is an interesting technology for like uh, transclusion. You take a piece of text from here, you plug it into another place. Conditional text, I will get back to that in a second, which is like, okay, if you're on a Windows machine, you need to read this. If you're on a Mac, you need to do this. Uh, and, and being able to switch between those uh, so that you can like show the right content to the right person, which is very important. And then a bunch of metadata, but that's not all that fancy. We also have that in Drupal. Um, very, very short, DITA has like three main structural elements. Uh, so actually four, including the outlines, which are called DITA maps. You got tasks, which are like, um, you know, this is how you do it, a how-to with steps. You got uh, concepts, which are like explanations of uh, a certain thing whichever that is, could be like notes, and you got references, and references, reference topics are um, the, like the, the API documentation, for example. And DITA allows you to do specializations and stuff, but I'm not gonna go in there. It's really cool, really fancy. Now, <coughs> we've got one problem also, well, next to, um, next to 
creating a better workflow for our, our Drupal documentation for the project, we've got another problem, or a lot of Drupal shops have another problem, which is documentation of their products. When you create a site for someone, um, you're kind of supposed to give them documentation about that site. And in a lot of cases, like we're uh, guilty as charged, uh, in a lot of cases, you just don't have the time or the budget for doing that. Um, and and there's, there's a couple of other, like there's, there's a lot of good reasons why it never happens. Like people probably will just go and do a screencast, which is okay, but they're, they're, we, could do, we could do better. We could do much better than that. And this is kind of what, what I imagine that we could do with the Drupal documentation and with our project documentation. Instead of having a bunch of really altruistic people that are spending a ton of their time um, without getting as much uh, recognition for it as like the, the developers, because you know developers are king. Um, but like we've got this team of people in, in Drupal that are making documentation, spending a ton of effort on it. Um, and, but it's like, you know, everybody should be doing documentation. It shouldn't be just a small team that is doing that. Um, and basically, if you use DITA with this topic-based architecture, you could use the same topics for your documentation for your customers as you're using for Drupal.org. You could use the exact same documentation. You could reuse that. So topics could become something like modules that people collaborate on and that people work together on and contribute back to when they're creating their documentation for their customers. Uh, and there's a, there's a bunch of other stuff, but I won't go too deep in detail there. Um, but I think I want to hand over the word now. First, Tamash, or you, or? Um, let me go first, because yeah. we'll introduce what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer is going to talk a little bit about the, the Core Help initiative. And um, yeah, go just go ahead. And uh, what, what, what's Tamash, and then Tamash will come to present his Google Summer of Code about conditional text and something that we've been doing in our company with, um, with outlines, uh, an outline system that is not bound to like, you know, you got one book outline, no, you can have as many as you want. Sorry, we only have one microphone here. We've asked for another one, but it hasn't come yet. So I want to talk a little bit about what this means for Drupal and hopefully Drupal 8. Um, so as uh, um, Christoph was talking about, what we'd like to be able to do is have a situation where if you made, um, we might have a new site called help.drupal.org or it might be on drupal.org, that's still under question. But uh, in drupal.org or help.drupal.org, we'd be using a bunch of different tools that I want to talk about for just a second to make some sort of curated official help. And this would be for the inline help that's inside of Drupal. So, you know, if you install Drupal, you would get, you could pull this into your site. And then you could build some custom site help um, if you're a site builder. And then you would have um, just the help that's relevant to that site. So the idea is, for instance, um, you know, there's, uh, there's some help for the block module that explains how to create a block, how to, um, different tasks that you would do with the block module, create a block, place the block on the page. And then maybe if you're using the context module, you might not want to um, use that help uh, page that says how to place blocks using the block module because you're using the context module for that. So you could turn that page off and put a different one in, in the outline in its place for your site, yes. Yes, well that's another, that's another thing. So um, you need to have, yeah, what you're saying, you need to make different outlines for the different roles on the site. So if you are a, um, just a content editor and you don't have permission to do the context module or the block module, then you would wanna be just using the um, content editor um, outlines and you could make it so that the uh, outline for how to manage the blocks and things on the page is not available to the role that can't do that. That's an excellent idea that we need to note. I will make a note of that. Um, can you make a note of that? Um, yeah, that's a really good point. So uh, yeah, so the question is, can we make it so that the help for the block module would know that, uh, or say, the, say the task for adding a block 
would only be visible to people who have permission to add a block. Um, so that the um, task um, help would use the same access system as the task itself. So that's an excellent, uh, excellent idea. So we basically need to have a permission field on a task. Um, excellent. Uh, we're going to have a boff later on. I'll show the slide, and we, we want to have some more discussion about this. So anyway, the pieces that we have envisioned so far for uh, the Drupal 8 inline help are, first of all, conditional text. And I just want to talk a little bit about each of these so you know what the terms mean. The, um, Christoph talked about it uh, briefly, but the idea of conditional text is that when you're writing, say, your task of how to add a block, in Drupal uh, 6, you went to um, administer, uh, site building blocks, and then add block. In Drupal 7, it's under structure blocks, add block. Uh, you want to use the same, but basically the task is the same once you get to the add block page. And there's no sense really having two pieces of content that both say how to do this, one for Drupal 6 and one for Drupal 7. And so what you want to do is you want to have a little tag in the top of your text that you're writing that says, for Drupal 6, go here, for Drupal 7, go there. And then the rest of the page could be exactly the same, because the task is the same no matter which um, system you're in. And what you can do that with conditional text, and Tamash is going to actually, uh, Tamash worked all summer as a Google Summer of Code student and built a conditional text module, which works great and I think is about to have a first beta release or yes. may just have had, anyway, just about to have a beta release. So that's what conditional text is about in brief. Um, help entities. Uh, we don't want the help topics to be nodes particularly because Nodes do all sorts of things in the site. They're your main content. They're visible usually to everybody, unless you've got some special content permissions module. They um, participate in RSS feeds. They have, you know, they're on, the, on your taxonomy page. You probably don't really want your help pages to be nodes per se, because they're kind of a, a separate thing that's probably only for administrators or certain types of users on your site. Or they might not be, but you want to be able to control them in a different way than normal nodes. So you want to have help entities, and if we're using sort of these data topics, um, we want to have ent uh, entities and fields that are specific to those entity types. Um, that's not really hard to do, and it's kind of all been thought out, but we just have to build it. Uh, contextual linking. You want to be able to link one help topic to another. You probably want to have some kind of universal ID so that uh, you're not um, rebuilding things. You also want to be able to, when you're on the add block page, if you want some help, you want to be able to click somewhere and get to the add help topic. So you want to have contextual linking between um, pages on your Drupal site and these help topics and, and vice versa. You know, why not have a link in your help topic that says open up the add block page and you click on it and it opens it up. You know, you can do that in, in your Windows uh, Microsoft Office help. If you're in your Microsoft Office help and you click on something, it will actually take you back to Office and, and get you right to the screen where it does that task. Why, why can't we do that? I mean, it's all, H it's all in Drupal. We should be able to link back and forth. Um, so that's kind of contextual linking. And then multiple outlines. Um, Christoph already talked about that. And uh, we have start, I guess, of a module just the, that you're going to demonstrate also to, that will um, build little outlines as opposed to the book module where when you create a node, you put it, you tell it what the parent page is. There's no concept of having a parent page. You just want to have outlines that are flexible. Yes. Um, each outline would probably be an entity, one, one like a node, but uh, another type of entity. So you could make multiple outlines and you could give different permissions to different outlines. And uh, an outline could be uh, different steps in one larger task, and each step was a, a little task topic. Or it could be even bigger than that. Um, you know, you can go back, back out as many levels of abstraction as you need. It could be, the outline could be things that a content administrator needs to do on the site, and it would have a link to the um, block, you know, the, the adding new content, finding content, editing content, or whatever else, you know, whatever else it needs to be. So it, it's flexible, though. I mean, an outline could be something completely different. I don't know what, you know, what you might need for your site. But, but generally, it's going to be links to topics that are either concepts or tasks or reference material for, um, so that somebody can gain an understanding and do things on the site. Okay. And then again, you know, just to stress this, the idea is all of these topics that are sort of canned and curated and you know, built by the documentation team, which hopefully includes everybody, will live on drupal.org or help.drupal.org or some way. And then we want to have a client server architecture so that when you're building a Drupal site, you can go and pull in the topics that you need, which could be for contributed modules or core or whatever. 
and build your site help from things that you write that are specific to what you built, plus the, the curated help that we have. And also, I didn't mention on here, but translated. OK, I'll just mention that. You know, uh, Drupal's international and, and the help documents themselves need to be translated by the same translation team that does Drupal. And instead of having them being embedded in the Drupal code as they are now, um, having them on um, pages will actually help the translators be able to comprehend what they're translating. So just briefly, um, the topic types. Um, Christoph talked about the basic data topic types. We want to kind of expand those and have a couple of custom types for um, Drupal. The task and the concept ones are, the, are from DITA. We actually want to have, probably have a specific um, topic type called a glossary item, and that way you could have things like, you know, underline the glossary words when you're viewing help, and you could have a little pop-up that tells you what the definition of node is, although we're not using node in Drupal 7, but block, for instance. You can have a definition for block, and anytime block appears in the help, you could have a little text filter that automatically made that into a link and a pop-up topic. Then you can also have a glossary that could be built A to Z as another navigational aid or a search. Um, a module overview would be another type of a, it would be a reference type of topic, but a special one, which would be an overview of what a module does and a link to all the tasks that you can accomplish with that module. Um, reference we, uh, is a standard data one. And then contextual would be another topic type, which probably wouldn't appear in outlines and indexes, but these would be the contextual help for um, particular sections on particular pages, like a field level help on, a, on the add block field. They might have a little question mark next to the field and a little pop-up item that could come just for that field. Um, so that would be a, a little contextual help item that wouldn't appear in an outline anywhere, but it's still very useful to have. And you probably want that to be a separate topic type so that it's um, separated out in the, uh, in the editing and in the, in the help building. And just as a little status report, as I mentioned, the conditional text module has been built. Outlines, um, at least we have a beta version, probably needs a few more features. Outlines, uh, preliminary development. Entities, that's pretty easy to do. We have a design for them. You just have to build the fields and so on. Um, if we're going to put it in core, we will need a reference field in core because, I mean, most topics are going to have a list of related topics. That's obviously like a node reference, but entity reference. Um, so we're going to need a reference module in core if we're going to put this in core. Um, contextual linking and navigation, still in the design phase. We need to do some more thinking. Client server, uh, way early in the design phase. That hasn't even been thought out. But I mean, we have models for other things that we can go out to a server and get stuff like uh, the update update status for modules, we do that, and um, also the translations. If you import a new module and you've got a French and English site, you're going to get the French and English translations. So we have models for that. It just needs to be thought through. Um, then we need to think about actually how to integrate translating these help topics with the localized.drupal.org site, because that's where the translation teams are. Haven't thought through that. Um, and some editing permissions. So for instance, if you're the maintainer of the views module and you want to um, do your help on, in this hopefully good enough help system that you won't need to use the advanced help module or whatever anymore, um, the, uh, you might want to say that only certain people in your project have permission to edit your help. And we need to think through the permissions on help.drupal.org or whatever it is for um, editing the help documents on a per project basis. Um, and this, there's a page which I should have put up a link for, I'll find it. Um, on Drupal.org, there's a page that outlines the, this uh, whole idea for the Drupal help system in more detail. Um, so I'll just conclude by saying we have a couple boffs scheduled. Tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m., there's a DITA boff that um, Christoph will be leading. In the, I guess the boffs are over in another building somewhere. And on Thursday at noon, we're going to have a brainstorm about um, help and documentation, and that's going to be during lunchtime. So I'll turn it over to Tomash for a quick demo of the modules. Um, so the, the next thing you'll see is the, the outline. Do you know how? Um, so basically, what we wanted to do was something like a data map. So the idea is that you can, you can um, Take a topic, whatever topic, could be um, any of these entities that, uh, that Jennifer just explained about, and drop them into a map, and then drag and drop them. Yeah, 
map being outlined. <laughs> there's there's so much name confusion. Um, so and and um, because in in Dita it's called Dita map. That's why. Yeah, we're getting there. So and. Um, Um, <laughs> okay, so can, can you go a bit down? Okay, so and basically what you see here, well, well, this is a part of a product that we're building, which is using some of the similar concepts of, of topic reuse uh, and maps. Um, so and this is the, the map or the outline entity <laughs> where you got a title and you got an autocomplete field where you can just look for a specific topic and you can add it. And then once you add it, it comes into your drag and drop list. This is um, reused from the menu system, right, uh, Tamash? Yes. Do you want to explain? Yes. I'll give it to you. Okay. So this is a... Uh uh, this is based on heavily on the menu system of Drupal. So if you see the menu interface, this is the same. It's using uh, uh, an API called table drag. And then with that, you can uh, easily uh, reorder stuff. And you can put it, uh, so you can actually build an outline tree, which could be interesting if you are doing like a book or something. However, currently what we have now uh, as an output format, it's just PowerPoint. But we, I don't think we need to talk about the output. Okay, so the thing is that uh, we, all, we could also do it with, uh, so this is just an interface and there's also an API for that to add topics here. Uh, a JavaScript API, so it works uh, with faceted search, for example. So, you, uh, so with this kind of stuff, you can really quickly just put together a document uh, from your existing uh, content pieces. Okay. okay. I show the conditional text. Um. Okay. Uh, I've created two uh, examples for con for conditional text. Uh, the first one is uh, when you have a different module. So this is a, this is a help text of the Brightcove module. It's copy-pasted from the Brightcove module's uh, help page. And if you see that uh, you can have certain parts enabled or disabled based on which modules you have installed. So for example, if you have use installed, then this text field would be open by default. Uh, same for media. There's a Drupal core specific uh, texts here, like you have a, a help text for Drupal 6 and you have help text also for Drupal 7. It's quite easy to write. Uh, the syntax is very uh, simple. So this is I just say that condition enabled views and then this, to, this display between the condition tags will be only displayed if you have views enabled. Um, another case is, uh, is when you want to display uh, text for just certain roles, then uh, we, could, uh, uh, we could also make it uh, possible with uh, this kind of uh, uh, conditions, so you can say that you just, uh, so a user can say that he is like a, a developer and then only the text for developers will be visible. Uh, I just quickly show the configuration page for it. Uh, what you have to do is to create a text format and that conditional text and then you could create these uh, custom values. Oh. So it, yes, um, where you can create a, a custom group which has values and those va values are true for certain uh, user groups and you could also say that for the modules that you have certain modules enabled on your site so it's possible that, uh, that the help site uh, could say that it has views while it doesn't have or something like this. 
Um, Excellent. I think I finished. Great. So anyway, I, th I think we're kind of out of time, but we will have uh, two boffs later in the week to talk more about these topics. And I don't, I guess we didn't leave enough time for discussions, but we probably have time for one question, if anybody has one. Or we can just conclude. Yes. Video What's that? Video inclusion? There's so much video out there. Is there any way, or we have, we've done something where we had to incorporate video into it? Right. So the question is, how could you incorporate videos? And I guess the answer that I would give is that um, within a, a given help topic, it's just an ordinary node or entity. And so you just, whatever technology you have for including videos in a node or an entity, you could use the same thing. So the media module, for instance. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. Oh, so, uh, okay. So the question is, is there some form of canonical outline that you could use to grow uh, the, uh, the help outlines up for your site, I guess? So the answer is yes. I mean, the, the help outlines will be entities that you could also import from the server. So you could start with the help out outline that we would provide or the help outlines we would provide and then add your own or you know, modify them in some way. So I think we better stop here and let the next speaker go. But uh, thanks for your attention. And I did find the, oh, so if you go and um, look in the community initiatives uh, core improvement section, there's a section on the new help system in that, in that part of Drupal.org if you're interested in reading more details also. Thank you.